Um, Well, as you know, I'm an entrepreneur and I get energy from being around other entrepreneurs. You're about to meet one of the most successful entrepreneurs on the planet. That's next on The Jeff Crilly Show. Many are predicting that the worst is yet to come, which is unfortunate, said one person here. Until now, they've enjoyed the reputation of being the nation's icebox. Watched a burglar in his home this morning by webcam. As a journalist of over 25 years, stories are what make my world turn. Reporting live from the Dallas Newsroom tonight, Jeff Crilly, Fox 4 News. But in 2008, I took the jump from my familiar life and started a PR firm from my home. We're talking about anyone with a camcorder like the one I'm using becomes a television network. We started slowly growing the company and we now have over a hundred clients and we've branched into the world of live digital broadcasting. I now own eight different TV studios and have a huge team. And the stories that I now get to share are sometimes the most important of my life. Life has a funny way of coming around full circle. This is The Jeff Crilly Show. Well, I can tell you as an entrepreneur, you want to be around other entrepreneurs that give you energy, give you joy. Uh, I've been visiting with my next guest uh, for the last half hour, and there's a bromance going on. <laughs> <laughs> Sean McGinnis, he's the CEO of Capital 54. Welcome to the show. Thank you so much, Jeff. And likewise, what a, what a pleasure. Your whole operation here oh, is thank you. spectacular. Thank you. You're very, very kind. You're well, let's talk a little bit about Capital 54, because I think um, companies like yours are so necessary right now with so many entrepreneurs trying to do things, but sometimes access to capital is a problem. Let's talk about Capital 54. Sure, so we started, um, it's the brainchild of Greg Alexander, uh, a fellow entrepreneur who had a very successful exit in 2017. And Greg is sitting on what we call dry powder. So it's a family office, and by family office it means we make direct investments. And our focus is investing in owners like yourself, um, mm -hmm. people that own professional services businesses. That's our niche. And we're in that niche because both of us have spent 30 years uh, cutting our teeth, having successes, having some failures. Um, and ultimately, our goal is to invest in the types of people that want to do something extraordinary within the professional services realm and who want to ultimately one day have an exit and take some chips off the table for themselves and their family. And if we can be the catalyst and provide the dry powder, our expertise, our networks, and we'll talk hopefully a little bit about YPO and yes. EO and community uh, ecosystems that help entrepreneurs, uh, we, want to be, we want to be a catalyst and, a, and an energizer for that, for that aspect. Outstanding. We're going to put the website up so everybody can see this. And tell us one of your success stories. What's your one of your favorite success stories? From? So I think you know teeing off again, Greg, and he's got a book coming out called The Boutique in September. And him and I have just spent a lot of time, literally line by line, chapter by chapter. And his own story is quite remarkable. So he had a career in corporate America, worked for a big data um, enterprise, data business and decided, probably much like you and I at some point, that he felt he could do something on his own um, and take that jump into the entrepreneurial pond. And over 11 years, he built an extraordinary business, uh, sold it for an 11 times multiple, which for a professional services firm is really, really good. And that's what created uh, an opportunity for him now to take the proceeds of that and spread that um, more broadly into other entrepreneurs. So that was really good, but it, it sounds easy. 11 years of blood, sweat, and tears, um, hiring the right people, making sure that you've, you've got the right mix of product and services, making sure that you, know, you can replicate what you do. Um, those are all things that you know, people forget when they sit down with somebody that's you know, got some rungs, you know, climbed up the ladder, and you know, may have the beautiful home and you know, the nice car, and, you know, look successful, but it takes a lot to get there. Um, yes. And, you know, so, so that's one. Uh, personally, I was very fortunate to sell my first business uh, when I was 35 years old, um, quite successfully. I had built a business over 14 years in the human resources area. Uh, so we did testing, psychometric testing. Mm -hmm. We did executive search. And then I had an organizational development consulting business. So I come at this honestly, because as you know, 
you're only as good as either the product or the service that you deliver, uh, and you have to be very consistent in that. So um, I, I did that, and then I parlayed that um, exit into doing something a little more uh, philanthropic. Uh, even though it was a for-profit business, we built low-income housing in Mexico uh, for about five or six years until the bottom dropped out of the market in 08, which was you know, an unforeseen circumstance. So if you look at the parallels between 08 and today, you know, the financial collapse, I mean, this is something we've never seen before, the pandemic, but um, the parallels were significant because businesses went away within a week. So we were doing work with Bear Stearns, we were doing work with um, AIG on the financing side, and those companies, well, AIG is still around, but Bear Stearns doesn't exist today. You know, so if anybody had the ability to predict that, um, you know, probably wouldn't be sitting here <laughs> with you today. But, um, you know, the reality of those experiences um, enabled me to think out of the box and not in a linear fashion um, and opportunistically. And, you know, if we look at the fellow entrepreneurs that you and I spend time with, um, one, of the, one of the essential ingredients, I think, is being opportunistic sticking with your vision and then having grit and determination to see through the tough times yes. you know because there are a lot of people today that are hurting you know there are a lot of industries our fellow ypo members that are in hospitality that are in um, different sides of media so theater businesses today right. you know you you've you've been extraordinarily well positioned to pivot given you know given what you do um, thank you but uh, let's talk about a couple of organizations that I, I think we're both passionate about, YPO and EO. Yes. So YPO I've been a member of for 14 years, and I was a member of EO for 16. I joined EO as a 26-year-old, so quite some time ago, Jeff. You can see a little bit of <laughs> gray hair, but not ago, too much. Not too long ago. But, you know, it was a, I was looking for, I was looking for a, a group that you know, could really help me on my journey in the early part of owning a business. I'd got my business up to a million dollars in sales. EO came along, there were less than 300 members at the time. I joined in Toronto, Canada. And immediately I got voluntold into a position of supporting the, the running of the chapter. So I became learning chair um, and met the most in just incredible people. Um, and we were talking a little earlier, you know, one of the grounding principles is you bring yourself uh, and all who you are in a very authentic, honest way. Um, you know, we have a concept called forum. It's like a mastermind for those that don't know what a forum is. But, you know, you meet with a, with a group of fellow entrepreneurs once a week, four or five hours. There's a process and, you know, it's grounded in truth telling ultimately. And so you're not allowed to share what you discuss. So trust is a very important part of it. But what you do is you get immediately to problem solving, real experience sharing, and that changes people's lives because when you can sit down with somebody who's potentially facing a bankruptcy or they can't make payroll or one of their key employees dies um, or they have something that goes on in their personal lives, it's very, very difficult to find people that have either been there with you or who have that natural incl inclination to help you. And so organizations like EO and YPO, YPO is the granddaddy of them all, if, if you would, it's been around for 70 years. I've just had the privilege of running the global business wow. as the president and chief operating officer for the past seven plus years. Um, and if it wasn't for meeting Greg Alexander and, and his vision for supporting entrepreneurs through the funding vehicle, I probably would still be there. Um, but it was an extraordinary seven years, um, you know, 30,000 CEOs from around wow. the world, and much like EO with 14,000. I mean, these ecosystems are invaluable. And I've got to uh, praise you because it, uh, I think both YPO and EO attracts the right kind of person. And I if you it, can yes. imagine, you know, you, you, you're a CEO, so you have a certain ego. So you, you put together all of these egos in one room. It could be chaos, but uh, <laughs> it really at could. times it is. <laughs> now, that's what we call sausage making in the vernacular because behind the scenes, well, whenever you bring humanity and personalities and different life experiences, you know, that mixture, that cocktail, mm -hmm. can either be very powerful from, from a positive perspective or it can rub around the edges. So, you know, managing that and, you know, creating the frameworks for collaboration are very important. So both EO and YPO 
they're non-political. They're not advocacy groups. They don't fly a particular flag that could be perceived in many parts of the world as, say, Western-centric or U.S.-centric or, yes. you know, uh, Middle Eastern-centric. It's what what creates the dynamic and the, sp the special source is you're all business people and you're it's building something. It's a feeling that you have a global community around you. Yes. So if you're traveling and you yes. wanted to look up a fellow member in another country. I mean, that's, that's one of the best benefits you know I can pick up the phone um, you know I'm in let's say I'm in Dubai yeah. and there's hundred and fifty people that would take my telephone call yes and the rule is if you remember get back to each other in 24 hours and you know you get frowned upon if you don't respond I mean obviously if you're on vacation or you're out of touch granted but uh, that's part of the ethos is you're there to help each other it's very much a servant leadership philosophy yes. um, and it, we don't pay lip service to it. You know, we've just, Capital 54, made our first investment in a company called Collective 54, which is a very similar membership model, but it's designed for owners of boutique professional services firms. The same elements of learning from each other, bringing your particular issues, so, you know, what, what are you facing? What problems are you facing in developing your business? Uh, do you want to exit your business? Are you prepared? to sell your company one day. And that's a question at some point, yes. having met some of your family members, Jeff, you're <laughs> going to be considering at some point. We can help you with that. Okay. <laughs> right, we'll, we'll, we'll have to talk. So we're almost out of time for this segment. No I wish, worries. Uh, th that's your camera. I want you to look right into the camera and, and say to the entrepreneur who's watching this uh, to not fear the pandemic and, and, and to embrace change because sometimes change can bring, a, uh, bring about some amazing things. You know, believe in yourself. The fact that you are in a business, you've had an idea, you've brought it to market, you have people that are counting on you and your grit and determination. Those are things that very few people, percentage-wise in the world, have. You have it. Um, w there are so many communities to help you on your journey. Reach out to your peers, reach out to your fellow leaders. Thank you for what you're doing, because business and entrepreneurship truly does make the world go round. Thank you for what you do. Wow, outstanding. I just got goosebumps. You're, you're a natural. <laughs> he's a natural anchor, isn't he, folks? <laughs> Come on. No. Are you going to pay me for that, Jeff? <laughs> All right. Well, we're going to leave with Fantastic. your website so everybody can get in touch with you. Uh, Capital54.com is the website. Sean McGinnis, it's been, a, it's been a real honor. Thank you. Thank you so much. That you is bet. so cool. That's it. And that's it for now. Okay, we'll so see you next first time. timer. How did I do? <laughs>